Brian Hildebrand, RxMuscle.com, with the one and only pitmaster Sean Catterley, Sultans of Squat 3 at the Emerald Cup Bodybuilding Championships in Seattle. Um, ten guys, six girls? Six ladies and ten guys. We saw some beastly guys here, and I think we saw some egos get a little bumped today, but we saw three big squats over 800. Start with the girls first. Christy Scott won here last year, the token win, obviously, but she comes in and hits a new PR. Yeah, Christy Scott was definitely the, the, the story of the day as far as the ladies go. Um, what was neat for us with this particular show was this was the first time in seven years that we decided to run a woman's only flight of lifting. Uh, in the past, we've invited one or two uh, ladies just to work in with the men, and they'd lift alongside the lightweights and, and the middleweights. Uh, this is kind of phase one of us moving into developing a, a true professional league for ladies. And, you know, we had a great turnout. We did it. It was a little bit spontaneous. Uh, I, I made the event announcements just about a month ago, and uh, we got obviously a lot of the top talent from the Pacific Northwest, but what I also really appreciated uh, was we had women come as far away as Pe Pennsylvania uh, just to participate in this show, and we had some good lifts. Uh, we had a couple gals take runs at well over twice their body weight, right. a few going as high as three times their body weight, and then when Christy Scott got to the show today, uh, she's dealing with a really bad head cold, and so we thought this would possibly be a lackluster performance from her in comparison uh, to what we've come to expect from the number one ranked lady powerlifter. Right. And instead, she uh, dials in a PR. It was superb. Yeah, no, the girls look terrific today, and uh, we're just as fierce competitors as the guys. That's for sure. They got up a little holler and hooting on the on the platform, which always makes the the audience and the crowd happy. Um, let's move forward to the guys. Um, some of the big highlights of the day, 20 year, the, tell me about this 20 year old, absolutely, and I'm going to use the word, retarded, 800 pounds as a 19 year old. Yeah, it's amazing. Uh, he didn't get the 800 pounds in the book today, but he was, you are correct, he was the first man to ever officially squat 800 pounds, and that's walked out and raw. So no monolift. He had access to the monolift, but he wanted to set the record, so Matt Somer from New York elected to do the walkout anyways, and uh, just a few short months months ago. Uh, it was a great lift. I saw it on video. It, no question it would have passed here at our show too. Uh, he got into the mid-700s today, which mid-700s for a 19-year-old. Uh, I think what excited me so much about this particular contest is anybody who understands uh, real classic powerlifting in its original format uh, has a, an appreciation for just how incredibly, almost impossible it is to go over 800 pounds right. in a competition. Right. And our goal at this particular show was to have the top three men, uh, regardless of body weight, squat over eight. Because an eight is usually the biggest squat of a large show where you have dozens of competitors. Maybe one guy will go eight. We reached that goal. We had three guys go over 800 pounds. So in my mind, that makes this one of the best squat shows uh, probably of the last four or, or, or five years that I've seen. Uh, the bar was really raised. How often have you gone to a squat contest where a guy who can dunk a 700 raw gets last place? Right. I mean, that says a lot. And then what was neat with the storyline is, what hardcore powerlifting is about, is we're trying to bring strong man and Olympic lifting and uh, heavyweight bodybuilding and power lifters all together for crossover events and that's what we achieved today at the show because we had going down for the final placings it got down to Scott Weech who got his start in raw power lifting but he was really turned pro as a strong man right. and he even set the uh, Axel clean, clean and press record by beating everybody who's everybody in strongman contests. Yeah, at four, 460 pounds. Yes sir and he's going against Randall Harris uh, who not only was our 2012 overall champion, uh, but he was our total record holder. Uh, he's been top three at three or four of our shows. He's an IPF Junior World Champ. He's a USAPL National Champ. He's a GNC Arnold Classic Deadlifting Pro Champ. So you've got this guy who's really a, a, a top dog in the largest amateur and the biggest professional powerlifting leagues, squaring off with one of the biggest names in strongman in America. And as you saw in the, in the lifting today, it's down to five or ten pounds 
pounds is the difference between first and second, and five or ten pounds is the difference between second and third. So we're actually seeing competition in powerlifting as opposed to what's become the unfortunate norm, which is 30, 40 guys come to a show and all but two of them get first place. Right. So here not only do we have a battle, and not only do we have first through tenth, but it was literally like a five or ten pound difference between each of the placings. Right. Now Randall Harris hit and he missed a 780, I believe. Uh, I believe is I have to look at the charts. I'm sorry, but uh, my brain's a little scrambled after announcing. But he started out having a hard time with a 790, uh, and he got his opener, which was in the low sevens. And then he struggled for depth with the 790, and then he came back and dunked that 810 to get the silver. It was, you know, he's a cl he he's a tough situation lifter. Uh, he's definitely the kind of guy. He did the same thing at, at the Ronnie Coleman, uh, and and three years ago he did the same thing again at the Ronnie Coleman, where uh, he'll be all the way back in fifth or sixth place, and he'll come to the table and ask what. It takes to get in the money and that's just what he goes for right. and he pulls it out almost every time. Yeah. Now Scott Weech hit 820 on his second, went for a huge, which would have been a record, 850 and he said, he, when I interviewed him earlier, just said he didn't have it in today. Now, again, he's been in the police academy, he's been running, he hasn't been, he's just kind of his comeback into training, um, but that 850 number would have been tremendous, but 820 certainly uh, was enough to get the job done today. Oh yeah, and with an 820 I'd have to check our records, but I believe that puts him top four or five out of everybody who's ever stepped onto our stage. So anybody who knows Scott Weech knows what kind of lifter he is. I mean, he's competed from coast to coast in some of the most challenging strongman and powerlifting events, and he's a performer. So when he told me that he felt like he was about 10% off his game, I don't think that's talk. I think that's real. And I think when he comes back, anybody who knows real champions, uh, even though he won, if they don't get what they're going for, whether it's a, a, a certain lift or a personal record, uh, usually tends to light a fire under him. Right. And then you see him come back bigger, better, and better than ever. Yeah. And probably weighing more and lifting more. Yeah. And one thing I wanted to note uh, while we're on the air is what we're really trying to do, and I think we definitely uh, succeeded in that goal today, is we're trying to, to, to bring the standards for squatting back to, to the sports heyday. And I think we're achieving that. Because not only are we requiring that people walk the weight out, which is part of the squat lift, but we're requiring that they break parallel, they convincingly break parallel. And I think this is really good because uh, there was a short period uh, in the first half of the 2000s where we've seen the, the squat depth get more and more shallow. And as you know, if people begin to see something if, if, if high squats are passed repeatedly, then a high squat becomes the standard for a squat. And so now we've essentially reset the game once again, where now we can present this to the world, where again they're going to see what a legit competition squat looks like, and then that'll be excellent because that will then hopefully in, uh, encourage and inspire uh, the amateur organizations who are not currently enforcing squat depth to start doing so, which is going to be better for the sport as a whole. Yeah, absolutely. There's no doubt about that. Now, tomorrow we've got Bros vs. Pros uh, 15 right here. You, I want to thank you personally for loaning us all the equipment to let us put our, our event on, and I, I promise we'll keep the chrome polished. Um, it's going to be a tremendous day tomorrow. I'm so looking forward to it, and the good news is we're hoping we're not have to move all this equipment out of here to bring it back tomorrow morning. I'm with you on that. Yeah, nobody, thank you very much. You know, nobody wants to move this shit out of here. Like, you, like you need to move One time, and that's it. One in and one out. Uh, um, Sean, thanks again. We appreciate you having us here. Um, Sultans of Squat 3 at the Emerald Cup Bodybuilding Championships here in Seattle, Washington. Um, huge weekend, just getting started. Powerlifting's done. Now we're going to go downstairs and see the pretty girls in bikinis, which is Sean's favorite part. And that's right. For Sean Catterley, Hardcore Powerlifting, I'm Brian Hildebrand, rxmuscle.com.